In part one of this short series, we saw how in 1493, King Joao II of Portugal was willing to go to war with Spain over any potential new discoveries in the New World. The Spanish claim to the New World was backed by a decree from Pope Alexander VI, granting them possession of any new lands discovered more than 100 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands. King Joao II, evidently concluding it hopeless to do business with a Spanish Pope, pushed a direct negotiation with King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain for a modification to the demarcation line that would more narrowly limit the Spanish sphere of influence. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel debated what to do next, but probably felt that they had little choice. The Spanish sovereigns were in no position to stand stiffly on their rights. They had a healthy respect for the powerful and ruthless Joao, and well knew that his navy and merchant marine, bigger and better than theirs, could render their communications with the Indies insecure if the two countries came to blows. After enduring threats of naval action and pleas for Iberian cooperation for a year, Joao II cajoled Ferdinand and Isabella to send representatives to a summit conference in Tordesillas, Spain, in June 1494. The Spanish king and queen pushed back on the Portuguese king's claims to the New World, but an agreement was reached. Where a treaty between the two sovereign powers shifted the line of demarcation to 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands. The alteration meant that ships flying the Portuguese flag were permitted to ply trade routes along the west coast of Africa. Still more important and less appreciated at the time, the redrawn line of demarcation gave Portugal the immense, fertile, and largely unexplored land of Brazil. The sovereigns of Spain were greatly relieved since the affairs of Portugal are arranged, and Spanish vessels will be able to go back and forth in safety. And so, the Treaty of Tordesillas kept the peace between Spain and Portugal throughout the 16th century. As their ships crossed the Atlantic Ocean to explore and conquer Central and South America. King Joao II did not live to see much of it. He died about a year and a half after they signed the treaty, in October 1495. He was only 40 years old, and poisoning was strongly suspected. A few years later, Amerigo Vespucci, the Italian explorer for whom the Americas are named, received an invitation from King Manuel of Portugal to observe a number of voyages bound for South America between 1499 and 1500. According to the terms of the Treaty of Tordesillas, Portugal was entitled to this land. The Portuguese king wished to learn if this newly discovered land, Brazil, was an island or part of the same continent that Columbus had already visited. The European division of the New World did nothing good for the natives already living there, but for Europe it had a lasting positive effect. This treaty preserved peace and friendship between the two great colonizing powers until Magellan's circumnavigation intruded on the sphere Portugal rightfully believed to be theirs. Never in modern history has so vast a colonial expansion been carried out with so little friction between rivals. Despite his accomplishment, even the TV series Isabel could not help scolding King Joao II for his great missed opportunity with Columbus, which he took about as well as can be expected. But despite his grand plans and mistakes, let's not overlook what he was able to accomplish. He may not have lived to see the full impact of his efforts, but that impact lasted for 500 years and continues to affect the people of Central and South America. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books, online resources, and films featured in this video.